Natalie. I don't hear her. Yeah, I don't hear her either. Hello? Yeah. Alright, we can hear her now. Okay, sorry about that. Kelly, what do you say? Uh, I'm getting like the the busy thing. I'm not seeing the screen. Wait, did I've got to share it? No, I can see the screen. No, yeah, I can see the me. screen. Okay. Yeah. Exit and come back in and try it again. Alright. <clears throat> Should I wait for Kelly? No, I'm back. <laughs> no, you go, just keep going. Awesome, awesome. Go ahead. Word that your warrior has bested the four holy demons has reached me as well. It seems that we are right to leave this world in your care. Hey, Pauline. What are you saying? Why are you here? But the Demon Lord's revival has been carried out. His power dwarfs the power of all other demons. Why do you ignore me? Pauline, it's me! I was only able to help minimally in your battle against the other demon. But in defeating the demon lord, I believe I can offer you something vital. And I also have something important to tell you all. Pauline, stop this nonsense! I must be- So please, come to the church on the morrow. Until then? Wait, Pauline, don't go. Explain what this is all about. I must pre So please, come to the church on the morrow. Until then? Pauline! I must prepare. So please, come to the church on the morrow. Until then? What is that? Pauline, she's... She's a childhood friend of mine. Uh, what? Uh, what do you say? Hey, what's the meaning of this? Explain this to your can at once. What in the world is an NPC? A non-player character. They are programmed to have only certain lines and actions. Meaning, they have no mind of their own. No mind of their own. So... She's gonna say the same things over and over. Till the next event starts, that is. Wait, wait. But she's your friend, you said. So that means. She's a real person, right? Right. Yes. She's not a program. Uh, oh, what? Lenny, we didn't hear you there, if you said anything. Yeah. Oh, crap. Why? Why is your real person? Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> right, yes, she's not a program. He's a real person, an NPC! Oh my. So does this mean that woman was also on Rubiame Heaven? Huh? If we consider what's happened so far, then it's likely the case. We all downloaded Seventh Layer from Rubiame Heaven. 
that was the root cause of all of us being here. Yes. She's the one who told me of the site in the first place. On April Fool's, I looked at the site. She, Pauline, was very excited about the new release. And when it came out, we looked at the forums together. What is the woman's screen name? Hold on. I don't remember clearly. I think it started with a P and it's repeated twice. Papa? Yes, that's it. She's a regular. I remember her well. She's a very nice person. Michelle, right? You're the owner of that site, you said? Yes, I am. You really don't know anything. I... We have one person who's been turned into an NPC. At the very least, we can be sure that your site is somehow related. It's nothing to laugh about anymore. I didn't even finish the seventh layer. Nor, nor did I plan to upload it. Yet you have no proof for us to believe as much. Proof. Tomorrow's plan to release on April's Fools was. I can't remember. But can I really say that I'm innocent? Am I really not responsible for this? Damn. How do we know him anymore myself? gonna happen if we blame anyone right now? I mean, I do thought Dark Knight was the prep at first. But now, though we've been together for a while, I can see him as the bad guy. He's hardly a puppet master laughing from the shadows. It doesn't seem that way to me either. Nelly. Instead of Playing the blame game, let's see how we can return to normal! That way better than fighting! Huh. Let's do that for now. As long as you agree too, Aid. I... I feel really bad that y'all wrapped up in this. If one of you and me haven't never existed, when it turned out like this, it's probably not your fault. And... And? No, never mind. So, I wonder, if we can beat the game, will she come back to normal? If we can really- if we can get back to reality in the first place, that might solve everything outright. No guarantee that's how she is outside of the game. Either way, our only option is to push forward. Huh. I suppose that's all you can say. Well, to the end then. She told us to come to the church tomorrow. The story won't advance regardless of what we do tonight. Yeah. Now. Oh, uh, uh, me? Uh, yes, what is it? Uh, you just been quiet for a while now, so I was wondering if something was wrong. I don't know, you just feel strangely aloof. What? Oh, come on, did I seem like that? <laughs> I'm just a little tired, that's all. Sorry to worry you. No, if that's all it is... Papa became an NPC. I feel like our situation has changed in a rude way. 
and Mel's peculiar behavior was concerning. I just wonder, if things change for the better? Giselle? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How about you put a song on? A song? Like a rap song? Give Fairy House a theme song. If you can, please put this in the next update. What kind of song do you want? Let's see. I think a gentle song would be nice. Okay, so something more like Drake. <laughs> and the lyrics? Can I think of them? Go ahead, Giselle, think of the lyrics. <laughs> Can you hear the voice? The voice always there for you. The voice, voice of fairy. Someday you shall be away. I thought I changed the setting so it didn't cut out, but uh, did it cut out? <laughs> I didn't hear but her voice yet. Okay. Someday you shall be away. I, I'm not seeing any more than that. <laughs> you don't see it, but her voice will never fade away? No. Do you see the next line? Hang on. Okay, it's back. I don't know why it's doing this to me. <laughs> Oh my god. I love how we are into 2022 and we're still having the exact same problems we had to set a loan party in the early 2000s. Seems that way. That's... But her voice will never fade away as memories have not gone away. Remember days I was with you, the days of warmth and peace. I shall send you the voice of a fairy. Through Le Sion. And it shall reach you true. Can't let those lyrics fast. <laughs> this is my last creation. In a way, it's everything I have. Uh, 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 uh. A dream. What was that? Uh, that felt like a horrible dream. A last creation? What the... What the heck is that supposed to mean? What, what in God's name did I make? Why? Why is it that when I try to remember... I start to feel sick like this? <laughs> Calm down. That right now, it was just a dream. Nothing more. I should go get some fresh air. Is someone there? Uh, you! Did you come out for some fresh air too? Yeah, you know. Oh, by the way, I'd rather have you call me by my real name now. By your screen name is just so much more familiar, though. Well, if that's better for you. I don't really mind. Mel's not with you, I see. Uh, Big Brother's sleeping in his room. Did you need something from him? No, it's just it's strange not seeing you two together. <laughs> True. Uh, me and Big Brother are like two peas in a pod. It's a rare thing these days. I have a brother and sister too, but we're as far apart as you can be. What? You had a sibling too? That's a little surprising. I was sure you were an only child. Do I seem that way? Uh, kinda. So, even in real life, 
you two get along really well. <laughs> you got it! Big Brother and me, we do everything together! <laughs> We're never ever apart! When you posted my site, you were always together too. Do you play games together too? <laughs> yep! I told you, we're always together! <laughs> you really get along. Mm -hmm. Uh huh, uh huh. Um, about what happened before. Thanks a lot for that. Uh huh? Uh, did I do something? You backed me up, saying that I wasn't a bad guy and whatnot. Oh, well, it, it was just what I thought. I was only saying what I felt, so you don't really need to thank me, huh? Thanks, regardless. Did something happen? I can't remember it. I can't remember what I was planning on uploading on April's Fools. Uh... It's like there's a perfect little hole in my memory, and when I try and remember what was there, I start to feel slightly ill. I'm really not the Mega 7's lair. I'm not the one who dragged everyone into this. I have no proof to back those statements up. He said that I'm not the type to be pulling the strings from the shadows, but on the off chance. You're worried about what you might have done during th that hole in your memory. But still, I just know it wasn't you. What's wrong with forgetting a little bit here and there? It's not like you would completely change into a different person, right? <laughs> Good people don't just change into bad ones all of a sudden. So it's totally okay. <laughs> if you're that worried, how about I give you a head rub? <laughs> Uh, no, that's a little bit much. Uh, thanks. <laughs> but regardless, thanks. I'll try not to let my thoughts get too negative. <laughs> yeah, that's a ticket! And, um, also, I don't dislike the world here in Seventh Lair. Just so you know, I'm not angry over the fact that I got involved in this. Even on the off chance that you're the one who made all of the seventh layer. I won't be mad at you, no, no. <laughs> Nelly. Uh, we wouldn't be fine with saying, uh, staying here a while. Wouldn't you want to go home, though? You have family in the real world and friends. Uh, I don't have any friends. Huh? Surely probably have some. Uh, why do you think so? Well, I mean, you're a friendly person and we're active in the forums. Uh, with words, you can be anything you want. Just because the character on the forum is positive and friendly doesn't mean that uh, the real Nelly is like that. Um, and even now, I'm only keeping this, uh, persona up because it's not technically real. Um, uh, hey, uh, don't tell anyone else. I, um, uh, I was bullied at school. What? You say it like uh, it's nothing. Happened a long time ago. But it made me stop wanting to go to school altogether. So I stayed home. That's why Big Brother is my only friend. As long as I have him, I don't need anything else. <laughs> In the real world too, I don't need anything. And actually, it had been a long time since I talked to anyone but him. <laughs> I think you're special, and the others too. Since we talked online so much, meeting in person like this, it was easier to have a connection. I feel like we are uh, friends. <laughs> and 
You were easy to talk to than I expected. I could tell you were a well-mannered person. <laughs> and JB wasn't actually that terrible of a guy. <laughs> no, he's terrible. He's just dissing Mel to high heaven back there. Uh, well, uh, yeah, that made me mad. But, like, I get the feeling he's just a lonely type. That's... Yeah, I can agree with that. He seemed to be looking for attention in forums. I don't think exactly have the thickest skin, though. At least, you're all easier to be around than many classmates. <gasps> you and GB, too. <sighs> I know, it's weird. I don't have any friends that are my age. <laughs> I can't seem to mesh with kids my age, so it's cool. I was always all alone. Even if I have to force it, I know that I have to make friends sooner or later. I wonder. Mm. True, having friends your age is better, and... I don't know, it seems like it's easier to be mobile in society. So in that sense, it's definitely better to have friends at school. But honestly, in my school days, I didn't get along well with other kids either. I mean, even as an adult, that's still true. But it wasn't that I had no friends at all. I ended up finding a, a like-minded friend online. I don't know his face and I don't know his actual age. But still, you wait out against a friend who you only have shallow interactions with. It's clear which one is better. It's not all about a profile you can put a face to. So. I think we can be friends. We have different ages and nationalities, and we can't talk about school or anything. But I don't think that's what's important. Uh, be my friend? No. I think I can be quite a troll to you on the forums. Well, there's no question now. You're not allowed to say such nice things, Dark Knight. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> but, um, I remember those words. <laughs> now, now that that's settled, we definitely need to bring Papa back to normal. Yes, indeed. You know, I always seem to have friendly chance. Mmm, yeah. Because we're both in a team, girl. Uh, obviously, we get along well. Well, so that Paw Paw was just a guy pretending to be a girl in line. I'll keep that to myself. So, how do you feel now? Think it'd be okay to go back to reality? Uh... Yeah, just a tiny bit. Um, I feel like it'll be okay. Huh? I'm glad. Yeah. Hey, morning. Finally awake. Yeah. Everyone's already waiting. Good morning. Whoa. You don't look so good. You okay? I'm not a morning person, is all. Wow, a <laughs> textbook shut-in gamer. Shut up. Now that everyone's assembled, let's go to the church! <laughs> We're gonna beat the game and get Papa back to normal! You don't have to worry about your age. Okay. <laughs> let's do our best, everybody! Yay! You seem extra enthusiastic. Did something happen last night? <laughs> uh, nope, nothing. <laughs> uh, it's just, um, I'm starting to think it would be nice to see you all in real life. <laughs> we should all meet in real life and be friends. Uh, friends. Friend, too now, JB. 
boy. Y yes, indeed, an elite such as myself is the polar opposite of net nerds like you, but if you insist that much, I suppose we can be. Okay, everybody, move up! <laughs> Let me finish. I wonder if we talked about last night really resonated with her. If it did, I'm glad. Now, all we have to do is hope that finishing seventh layer will turn us to normal. I was awaiting your arrival, hero and party. Pauline. I am deeply thankful for your valiance in the face of all your trials thus far. Not fearing the magma, you ventured into the volcanic caves, defeating the first of the four holy demons, and how you journeyed to the undersea temple. And how you mounted the dragon to journey into the heavens as well. I'm sure that the stories of your bravery will be told for generations to come. That... that was what you plan to have us do? You tried riding a dragon! <sighs> it feels like we got save data from someone else and jumped straight to the last boss. All that remains now is the Demon Lord himself. His power is grand, on a completely different scale than the other demons. However, there is a secret regarding the Demon Lord. And it is one I must tell you all. A uh, secret? It is a secret that has been guarded by the royal family. The true form of the Demon Lord is the Queen of our land! What? When the Demon Lord invaded our land in the past, the Queen had used her own body as an attempt to seal the Demon Lord away. At the time, it was thought that she was successful. However, after regaining his power and reviving, he took over the body of our queen, and returned to the underworld. Hey, Pack Creator, was that in your original outline? Now that I think about it, I remember considering such an ending. Personally, I think this development would be more interesting earlier in the story. That way, it would be easier to visualize the objective of beating the Demon Lord. I give this a low D. I would like for you to not criticize a story this late into the game. Defeating the Demon Lord would mean killing the Queen as well. And if possible, we wish to avoid that. Oh uh, yeah, the poor Queen! I mean, who cares about an NPC anyway? <laughs> Sheesh, jeez dude. After the Demon Lord took control of the Queen, scholars from all over the world gathered to find a way to return her. And in truth, I am one of those. Oh, so it's gonna be one of those kind of stories. I live now as a sister of the Church, but my true name is Grimior, Mage of the Dawn. Stop dismissing around, Polly. You're a noble person. We were able to put our powers together and create a divine weapon. It has been dubbed the Paladin's Dagger. If you thrust this into the Demon Lord, it will be vanquished, and the Queen shall return to her original form. Here it is! Our OP weapon! I knew you were a full-blown otaku. However, the Paladin's Dagger is not yet complete. Even with the powers of all the scholars, it could not be realized. 
So, we just need to do the event in which we complete the dagger? To finish the paladin's dagger, the soul of a strong warrior is required. Huh. A soul? Given that you have defeated the four holy demons, I am sure that you can complete the paladin's dagger. So that means... I must request that one of you become a sacrifice. So, one of us needs to die. In a way, this is totally by the books! We have a sad event with one of our friends dying and that makes the final battle all that more epic! Yeah, pretty much. Just told us beforehand, huh? I completely forgot that it developed like this. I realize that I'm asking something terrible of you. And I apologize. Which is why I'll not force you all voice it before you. One is to decide who will be the sacrifice, complete the paladin's dagger, and save the queen. The other is to defeat the demon lord outright, as well as the queen along with him. Mm. That settles it. No way one of us is gonna die for us. The queen, I had no idea she even existed until a minute ago. And plus, now that we have aid on our side, we don't even need an OP weapon anymore. Take on a demon lord, no problem. Right? It's not even up for consideration. Okay, I'll be the sacrifice. Agreed! You see? What? Hey, are you- are you saying? We require a sacrifice, do we not? I'll do it. Jackabo? Him. Maybe. Hello? Oh, okay. There he is. Sorry. Uh, wait, 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 wait. You don't understand how games work? Even without some all-powerful weapon, it's all... It'll all end so long as you beat the Demon Lord. Yeah! If you beat the Sacrifice, there's a chance you might actually die, too! It might only happen in game. Better. I was going to die eventually. What? Why do you say that? Because Pauline wishes for that as well. No, she doesn't. NBCs just say uh, what they're programmed to do. Those are not actually Papa's words. Get a grip here. I know. I know it's not her speaking. But you, they are just lines in the game. There is meaning to what she is saying. But what? Oh, do you... Is there some reason for you to think that? Last night, I was thinking. Think of why she was like this. You said that she's a non-playable character. Meaning she has no mind, that she's just an empty shell. Yeah. It is my fault. But what do you mean by that? Pauline is... Very likely already dead. What? Dead? What? Are you trying to say? Whether before or after being pulled into seventh lair, I cannot be certain. But in the real world, she lost her life, which is why this is the only shove of her that remains in the game. I think that is the answer. Uh, wait. Uh, uh, what led you to think that? 
Uh, why is uh, why is she dead? <laughs> How could she be just a shell? How? Is it really a topic up for discussion now? We don't you have any idea how we got into this world in the first place? <laughs> the problem is that she's turned to a shell for a person. And I have an idea of, of how it came to be that way. Wait. I... killed Pauline. <laughs> uh, uh, killed her? What? What? What are you talking? Hey, cut the jokes. That's that's kind of like saying that you're you're some kind of murderer. That's not. It's not. I'm not. Are you serious? Yes. Why? Is that she? That Pauline? She's your longtime friend. Why do you need to kill someone like that? Do you know the Dutch decapitator? Uh, what? Decapitator? I do. A Dutch serial killer. In the past decade, many have been killed by the same method. Yeah. Talk of it blows online sometimes. He always takes the head of the victims, apparently. I think maybe on French news, maybe it was never covered. But on the net, the kind of places with underground information. He's a fairly famous killer, and those become more like an urban legend. Hey, cut it out. Are you saying... Yeah, it's me. Are you? I've killed 24 people. You, you can't just spout off nonsense like that. A serial killer? What are the chances of of us running into a serial killer here? It's impossible. Why well, is it impossible? Well, because normally we'd never run into one. But the possibility is not zero. And I am not lying. Then... Give us some proof. Show us proof now! Proof that you're really the Dutch decapitator. Need proof? That's odd. Need proof that not that I'm innocent, but that I am guilty. I can't believe it. In fact, this actually makes sense. After you maintain such pose in a face of a monster like that, so my eyes weren't deceiving me. Yes, as you said, I was perhaps smiling at that time. Why? Why would you murder anyone? Right, if this is to be my end, I wouldn't mind talking about it. Would you be willing to listen? Uh... Please. Tell us. There's no way. No one can go on being this clueless about everything. Okay. I'll talk then. <laughs> it was easier when I was a child. We unknowingly do cruel things as children, right? Roasting bugs or torturing animals is the same as the rest so you don't stand out. But little by little, everyone around you realizes the cruelty of those acts and stops doing them. Moreover, they feel an aversion of guilt at the thought of doing it. I'm not able to determine if that's benevolence that comes with congenitality or instinct or something that's taught through discipline. We talk about discipline, there's something I have plenty of. And you can see what I'm getting at. Maybe something in my brain doesn't allow me to feel compassion. Or maybe I don't have the ability to learn. But either way, the way normal men see female flesh as an outlet for their lust. I saw the corpse of another person as an outlet for mind. 
Hermes dive they don't eat, but they can survive without sex or pleasure. But holding that back just tends to make those desires build up. Eventually, those needs start to rot your insides. Maybe it's an extreme example, but I think it serves well enough as an analogy. I struggled with a corrupt mind ever since I was young. I was 10 the first time I truly shocked my parents. I captured a stray cat and dismembered it before I burying it in the garden. Didn't notice it until my mother was gardening one day and found it. My mother screamed like a stray herself. My father scolded me fiercely before taking me to a psychiatrist. I then learned that what I felt inside was incompatible with society. That it was what society considered criminal. But that didn't convince me of any of it was wrong. In fact, I started to feel it was illogical to be bound by such rules. I was 12 the first time I killed someone. No one knows about this. I never told anyone about it. Thus, you all will be the first to know. We caught me on the way home from school. A husband and wife were just talking. The woman was next to the stroller. She wasn't focused on it at the moment. She was involved in the conversation, likely thought there was no danger to the child in the broad daylight. I was a child as well, so she was not suspicious of me. Naturally, but also the ones to fear, not children. I passed by the woman, and then I realized I had her baby in my arms. Had I cried then and there, I would have been discovered. But the baby continued sleeping, and I continued walking. The people passing me by actually smiled cordially. Looking at your little brother, what a good boy you are, they said to me. I smiled bashfully back at them. I went on into the forest from there. I put my hand to the baby's neck. The sunlight was seeping through the treetops, seemingly making the baby's face shimmer. It had, of course, woken up by now, but after filling its mouth with sand, it couldn't make a peep no matter how hard it tried. I think I may have been strangling for a number of minutes. We caught feeling as though his breath left us remarkably quickly. But, even still, I thought as if I was breathing for the first time, as if the clenching sensation in my chest had been released like a valve. That's when I knew that this was what I wanted to do. You didn't want to hear it? I see, sorry. But you don't understand that I've always been insane We won't get anywhere. Why did I kill? Why am I called the Dutch Decapitator? Why did I kill Paul Reed? There's only one thing I can say to sum it all up. I am insane. I was 13 when I first met Pauline. She moved to the house next to mine. She was the type to warn to anyone right away. I remember her crying over very insignificant things. It was a bit irritating to me at first. I was relatively social, rather just the way a typical child was. My teachers all liked me. It was all an act. But Pauline, having moved next to me and being about the same age, started coming over to play regularly. And the time I spent alone began to dwindle. It was easier for me not to not have to talk to anyone. Keeping up a facade is tiring, after all. Yet, after spending a lot of time together, a change happened inside me. I don't believe in fate or anything, which is why I think it was merely the result of spending time together as we went through puberty. For whatever the reason, I soon came to realization I was in love with her. I was surprised at myself. I never suspected that I had real emotions in any, any capacity. I thought I was purely insane, could never love another person. The thing I craved more than anything else was to kill. To think that wasn't all that was inside of me it made me a little happy. I think the feeling I had for her was perhaps pure. I was never able to tell her my feelings. Merely being in love with her didn't somehow make me a normal person. My essence hasn't changed. All that happened was the capability of love was added onto it. I couldn't let the insanity reach her. She was as normal as could be. Normal? No, she was the type to live in a fantasy land. She believed there could be no evil in this world. 
I'm sure that's how she saw the world. Nothing abnormal even registered in her eyes. Which is why, which is why I couldn't let her world be destroyed by a man like me. I was the operation. I knew that I must not be intimately close to her. By keeping a damage free distance, we grew to be good friends. Nothing has changed, my insanity included. I didn't dwindle nor decline, but stayed within me. By the time I was in my twenties, my hands were further bloodied. Whispers of the Dutch decapitator started to circulate in the Netherlands. I thought it would be traced back to me soon enough, but the way I carried the axe out was too sporadic, and hate that those affected wasn't enough to catch me. I always went far out my way to kill, I never did it in the same city. When I was 25 though, I think a security camera somehow managed to catch a glimpse of me. My killing spree was thus revealed to the world. The ease at which I was discovered was surprising, although it was equally surprising that I'd taken that long. Either way, the fish was now on the hunt for me. That day, Pauline gave me a call on the phone. It was pouring rain that day. I had a raincoat pulled tight over my face, making it hard to see and breathe. Think about it now, that raincoat felt very much the same way my life did. Hiding my face, unable to see what lay ahead, I walked on, struggling to breathe in the torrential rain. I knew shouldn't have, but followed her invitation. I headed to her apartment where she lived alone. She was careful not to alert anyone else when she invited me. She gave me a cup of hot chocolate, a freshly washed towel with a pleasant smell. Nearly in tears, she said. It's okay to know you're innocent soon enough. I figured. This is the way she was. There's no insane killers or criminals in her world. She never think the man sitting before her was one of them, nor would the possibility ever enter her mind. But then, for me the first time, I laugh out loud like a maniacal fool. It was funny in a way, but also very sad. It was the first time I revealed myself to her, and she would finally know the real me. I always thought I didn't want to destroy a perfect world, but actually, I wanted her to understand me. To understand the insanity that was me. I wanted to be in her world. I did it. All of it. Polly? What? For ten years now, I've been killing people little by little. What are you saying? I've always been a killer, Pauline. Her face was stiff and pale as a ghost. I think it was the first time I cracked a surface in her world. I thought she would report me, that she would despise me from the bottom of her heart. It would have been fine. It's what she should have done, after all. Then there has to be a reason. No, there doesn't. If there was, it would just be that I am insane. I've been insane since I was born. I wanted to kill her for as long as I could feel. That's not right. There's no one like that. There is. He's in front of you. Take my blood. But I, I won't believe it. You've always been so kind. You're not that kind of person. Up until now was all a lie. The me before you now. She bit her lip. So hard the color changed and hung her head. She allowed an aching moan and started to cry. It was a voiceless, anguished wail. I was so much as sorry as it was happy. Because of me, she was traumatized and was crying her eyes out. Oh, believe me, I know. I know that I'm filled. I couldn't tell you how long she was crying for. Then, as if she found something inside her, herself, she stood up and picked up her phone. Right, good. Call the police. Tell them there's a murderer in your house. I wanted it. But, then she threw the phone receiver on the floor. One week. God. Was what she said to me, but it was barely a whisper. I'll hide you here for one week. What are you saying? For one week. Stay with me. Pauline? 
after that, turn yourself in. Why don't you just report me now? Why hide me? You're taking quite a risk. Because... Because I've always... I've always been in love with you. Where did I mess up? I thought I kept a sufficient distance between us. We both knew. We both knew that I should turn myself in, and she should call the police immediately. But, as if we were stuck in a thick swamp we couldn't pull our legs from, we chose the option we both knew was wrong. I live in quiet stillness behind closed curtains. Even at night, I used no lights. When she came home, I would finally move. I kept up that life. Regrettably, I should say. At the week, the day I promised I would turn myself in was nearing. That night was the night of April's Fools. I was planning on turning myself in the next morning. She was on board with that too, I think. That's why we chose to pass the time with something carefree. She sat in front of her computer and opened up the game site. We owe me heaven. So, the guy who runs the site, he's releasing something new tonight. Yeah, I know. He told me the day before last. Oh, did I? I feel like I'm getting forgetful lately. The other night I rode the site. It kind of took me back to those three years ago. That's the last time I did when you told me about that fairy game. Yeah, fairy house. I really like that one. It just felt so gentle. I hope the new game is like that. Yeah. She had just gone out of the shower and wet hair draped over her neck. In her mind, she was still that same little girl as always. But the smooth contours of her neck and shoulders looked erotic, making her appear as a woman to me. I hope it goes up soon. Hmm. I hope him saying he'd release it on April Fool's wasn't an April Fool's joke in of itself. If he does, we can play it together. Hmm. We have to stay up all night to beat it. Hey, do you remember Fairy House at all? Yeah. Do you give language to the fairies? Wait, do we go to Swivers? I don't know. <laughs> Because if we follow like the quotation, like yeah. you think you go back and forth. To here. Okay, you don't give it to them. You just become able to talk with them. So what kind of words did you teach them? Oh, uh, what kind did I? I don't remember. Oh. I am. Um, I asked the fairies a question. I like. My childhood friend. What will become of this love? And what did I say? Someday it will come true. Well, those fairies, they're not very nice. Yeah, maybe in a hut. Oh. It's up, you posted in the forum. made it for April's Fools, what kind of games is it going to be? There's no explanation for it. Let me download it first. I've got oh, finished already? That's a small file. Hey, let's open this up and... She squealed in excitement as she turned around to me. I like it wasn't thinking a single thought at the time. I moved unconsciously. Without <gasps> control, I grabbed her exposed shoulders pushed her to the ground, and then, at her nape, no, her throat, I sunk my teeth. You may not believe me at this point, but I had no intention of doing that. The girl who was all of a sudden a full-fledged woman, her skin, I wanted to touch it, and she would have allowed it. I wanted to make love to her, as a man does to a woman, but then, 
my desires were twisted. I had two very powerful emotions. One of being in love with her, and one of wanting to kill someone. But those two, I know for sure they were different things. I, more than anything else, wanted her dead body. More than consummating any feelings of love between us. That's what I wanted the most. After a penetrative throat, my consciousness drifted far away. And when I came to, I was in that cave. And when I saw Pauline alive and well, it was such a shock. I wanted her dead body, but on the other hand, I still wanted her to be alive. Well, she's basically a husk of a human now. Ah, you monster! What have you done? I can't understand how how that could come across your mind. If you did understand, do you be like me too? Uh. <laughs> no. No. Enough. Stop talking about this. I can't take it anymore. There's still, still something that I want to know, but Nelly, you don't want to hear. You can step outside. There's no need for you to hear everything. You volunteering to be a sacrifice? Is that to repent for what you did to her? No. It's because I was always planned on killing myself. You wanted to atone for his sins, shouldn't you be tried by law rather than taking your own life? I don't feel like I've sinned. I'm not killing myself for atonement. Stop it. We're gonna go crazy just listening to him. He's insane. And that's that. So, go ahead. Be a sacrifice, sir. Whatever you want. Jump off a cliff for all I care. Hey, NPC! I can't get this psycho out of my sight! <laughs> now! Jackabo, calm down. Calm down. Oh, you think I can calm down? What? Are you trying to take his side on this? Then you're on Team Psycho, too! Screaming about it isn't going to do anyone any good right now. Huh. Well then, get him out of here. He disgusts me. I can clarify one thing, I'll do that. I'm not planning on stopping him either. You don't feel any guilt, then why, why are you considering suicide? She too thought I would do so. I just spend one final week with me. I put that one single crack in a perfect world. I think she accepted that crack I made. She didn't attempt to override it with more dreams or lies. I won't suggest she understood my insanity, but at least she recognized it. What are you? That's just your own psychotic delusion. Try and frame it so it's convenient? I can claim to know the relationship we shared. Even that, I can't explain it either. So, what's the point of committing suicide? So that she won't be alone. I don't like the word fate, and I don't believe in it. But even still, if Pauline as she is now, was one of our lives, I feel as though I'm being guided to it. As if someone who knows about the two of us is pushing her to say it for some reason. I kind of feel that way too. We saw I, I'll be the sacrifice. I have to be. We, we were speechless. Even Jacobo was silent now, clenching his teeth bitterly. It would be easy to curse him for what he's done, but we all knew. Knew how pointless any of that was now. Attacking him for what had already happened 
wouldn't change our situation. And he would lash out in anger to him, who calmly take it as if he deserved it. We apologize to Pauline, that would only be to saturate our own emotions. Everything between them had already come to a close. Whatever any of us wouldn't make it easy for anyone, no one would be saved, and nothing would be solved. And though he still exists in a place where we could reach him, I still felt as though we were hearing a voice from recording after everything has already happened. We're consumed by an emotion that had no outlet. Very well. Lastly, let me ask one more question. What sort of conversations do you have with the fairies? Did you really forget? I... I have two strong desires. One very delicate one. I asked them what would become of them. And the answer? That will all come true. Goodbye. I'm sorry I made things so difficult. Have you come to a decision? Yeah, I made up my mind. I'll be the sacrifice. What a truly honorable choice. Your heroism will hold for ages to come. Honor. I'm the lowest scum in the world. Now then, please come to the rear chamber. I'll perform the ritual to merge your soul with the paladin's dagger. Yeah. Your life will never be forgotten. Me too. I will never forget you either. I'm sorry I put you through so much pain. I love you. After a while, the sister returned to us, holding an ornate dagger. As NPCs did, she told us the essentials. We waited for the moment, hoping that maybe Pauline would be free once her NPC tasks were done, but she just repeated the same lines over and over again. The room that Aid disappeared into no longer opened. Um, so now we go to the underworld, right? Through the fold of time, was it? Yeah. Hey, you little sack of shit. You really clam up at the most important times, don't you? What? I don't... That's true. Back there, you couldn't say a single thing to A. Sitting there, brainless and scared. excuse for a man you are, you little... JB, why does Big Buddy have to get this ridiculed by you like this? Big Buddy hasn't done anything at all! Yeah. Can we please stop lashing out one another? We're nearing the end. Now, we just need to beat the boss and finish the game. Let's finish it. Fast. I'm exhausted. Yeah. A completely changed the mood between us all. There's no longer any space of banter or idle chatter. It was like a weight hanging over all of us. We find ourselves before a grave. When it sounded a grave, the air seemed to ripple. The stress and aura started to envelop us. It was almost like... Beta Morgana. Uh huh? I'm a rage. Just like a dream, almost. A blinding white light engulfed us. The next moment, we were standing on the desolate, almost surreal open plain. The sound of thunder loomed in the distance. 
Okay, so is this the underworld? So the demon lord is here somewhere. Uh, we have the dagger, but this is still scary. So, so what now? Who's gonna, who's gonna do it? Uh, rock, paper, scissors again? No, I'll do it. Huh? Are you serious? Something tells me that has to be me. Uh, because you're the hero? The car from before means nothing. I'm no hero. Um, the creator of Rayumi Heaven. I don't know Seventh Flare. I never made such a game. But this is something that happened through my sight. So, as a creator, I need to step up. If it's anyone's duties, it's mine. If the Demon Lord wrecks you, then I'll pick up your bones! I just pray it doesn't come to that. Uh, oh, how did it be We have this super strong, secret weapon! Just close your eyes, and give it a few... Howdy, howdy! <laughs> hey, you're not supposed to be cool. Alone at the key moments. Now, let us go. To the final battle! <laughs> Demon Lord Jordan? Wait, you, you say me? Yep. Oh. Here's your it won't be necessary! I thought I sensed a disturbance in the air. It seems that some human humans have intruded into my world. Uh, it's huge! Completely! On another scale! I'll soon. Just... right, data. Just think us a bunch of data. You're the one who would be regretting. I'm Dark Knight of Rayuri Heaven. And as its creator, I'll erase this game and everything with it. <laughs> Show us what you're made of, creator. It's a boss, Michelle. Huh! Before, I'd never consider how a character in a game might feel. What I thought was only the mechanics and how the users would approach it. But, now, being rallied by my party members, standing here before a monster, the likes of which I'd never seen, this sensation has to be exactly what the characters felt. I didn't have your typical health or stat bars like characters did. They were probably dying instantly from a single blow. But I couldn't stop now. To get back to reality, to return them back as well. I took up my dagger, and swung it wildly in front of me, and then... Oof! A dark night? He just... Fell to the ground like a rag doll. Is that all you can manage? Let that take you. Very well. It is time that I show my real power. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, wow. The, the dagger. <gasps> it went <gasps> in. What is this? This divine energy? No. Don't feel me away from the princess. <clears throat> Stop!
Uh, whoa. Oh, you are lucky! The Demon Lord disappeared! I can't believe the dagger hit its mark after falling out of his hands. Hey! You lack of a developer! Looks like you did it! How about you stand up? Uh, uh, what? Was that it? Hey! Hey! It's a woman! In the light! There, there's a woman there! The princess! Um... She, she's here! Pr prince, princess? Princess! For our princess, she's... Yeah? Princess Gabby? <laughs> oh, 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 what happened? Hey! Mr. Creator! Was that outfit for our princess your your idea? I thought I needed some fan service. Nice! Hey you two! What are you staring at? You filthy bird! Huh? I think you'd better go off saying filthy to our little fly on the wall over there. Huh? Why me? If you don't say anything, that means you're the one thinking the pervious of things. I am not. Yeah! Big Brother is not that kind of a person. Nelly, that's just the kind of creature men are. You have to understand that, for his sake. See, that big brother isn't like that! He's different! Um, if I may, I have no idea what's happening here. What on earth is going on and where are we? Okay, I'll explain from the beginning as best as I can. Okay? Nice outfit. Fucking pervert. Well, it's difficult to comment on. But I don't believe you. I can see things are pretty crazy just by looking around. Turned out not to be an NPC. <laughs> Francis. You know, that's not really the kind of person I am. So, you too! Huh. You're connected through Ruyame Heaven? Yeah, well, yeah. I downloaded Seventh Lair. And right when I opened it up, totally lost consciousness. Uh, what was your screen name? Can't tell if you texted me. Do you have anything like that? I don't know those games, but never interacted. Oh, maybe one time I... As of right now, we are 
pretty typical for a video game. It's... Someone she's been up for too. But it's too weird calling you Anon. Please, uh, tell us your name, Princess. It's Maria. It's Ma yeah. Maria Campanella. Oh, all the girls have the same name. That's my real name. Right, that's like 15 years old. <laughs> Jordan, we can hear you in the background for reference. Did you say N Maria? Huh? She's a friend of yours! Wow, I thought vaguely that I remember your face from somewhere. I saw you in Game Magazine four years ago. Four years ago? You certainly have a good memory. I certainly do. Oh, he yeah. wasn't the manner, he wasn't the face he was remembering. <laughs> well, yeah, that was the reason I made my way into indie game making. You know that game, Farmy Farm, the one that had millions of downloads? She's the one who made it. The maker was a female, huh? Well, I didn't know it that well, but I knew that it was quite popular. It was quite a hot topic. Wow, so someone amazing like that was in the only heaven? No, you usually don't ever remember the names of faces. Of game makers, right? You're a different breed, where you may have a guy. That's so good! You have a super famous person playing your game! <laughs> you should get her autograph when we get back to reality! <laughs> I wanna get it too! Nelly, as a game maker myself, it really doesn't make me happy to hear you put it like that. We should be on the same level, being both creators. Yet, to know a person like you, I'm a peasant or a presence. So don't even consider me to be a competitor. I mean, I know I'm not, but... Damn. Well, let's bring out all my game and hurry up and finish this, yeah? Let's get it done and get out. How are we supposed to finish it, though? Uh, nothing changed after we beat the Demon Lord. Usually what happens with things like this is you have to go back to town. That's the final scene, and then the ending credits could roll, and after the player feels good about himself. Okay, let's head back. Beat the demon lord, so things should be all wrapped up, right? I wonder if the townspeople have a feast prepared for us! <laughs> oh, hey! What is it? I uh, actually really like the Royal Me Heaven games. Oh, really? Thank you so much. Okay, so shall we hope they don't try to dump her? I know, I know, it's just my own warped cynicism. Uh, just jealousy. Shameful. Richard's will get in trouble and dogma. Man. <laughs> Can't go wrong with Dragon's Dogma. Oh, let's just say, when you think it's the end, it's just not the end. A lot of NPCs greet us in celebration upon our return. 
Nellie and Mel go, got in character and joined them in jumping around. It's still unsettling to hear the same empty lines repeat over and over. But still, I think that was all finally over. There is some sentimentality to it. Knowing that we'd finally be able to return. That I'd be able to see her. Give her the first peace of mind in some time. And then, the game, it finished. Thanks to the hero and his friends, the world was once again at peace. If you did get me as the debugger, it wouldn't have happened. So you think. You can close? Huh? Yeah. Did you just see the credits? If not, then what was that? Does this mean it's not over? No way! Radio? Because it's the starting scene, I think. This is where it first descended from the sky. So wait! Does this mean? Uh, what's going on? Is it someone missing? Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, I just think you're here, right? Oh, well, now you mention it, he's gone. Where'd he go off to? At a time like this, too? No. Uh, I'll go look for him! It's dangerous to go alone. There are monsters. Let's all stay together and go. It's fine. Huh? It's fine! I'll go find him myself! You all don't have to come with me. Hey, why are you being so... I said leave me alone! Ah, uh, so here you are. I was looking all over for you. M Mel? Alright, <laughs> uh, I have to tell you about my controls. Why do you have to say that now? Big brother! Let's go somewhere for a minute! Not here! Hey! Mel! What are you saying? Controls? Did you hit your head? Before that, you have to understand something about me. No. You stop! Please, not that! <laughs> You'll see in front of them! I am your very own personal NPC. <laughs> Thanks so much for making Mao and Ryome heaven. Uh, what? what? What's happening? What is this? You had some little charade up your sleeve. I see. Hey, Mel! Not funny. Uh, absolutely not funny at all. We've had enough with humans turning into NPCs 
with a friend. I wouldn't have normally been in seventh layer, but having Pinky Rose and No Mo would just be too strange. So that's why I'm here too. Listen to me. It's stop it, stop it, big brother, stop it! I know that. I already know. I already heard all of this. But naturally. I have no player. Hey, you punk! Cut it out and get back to normal. The normal, useless little turd we all know. This is me ordering you here. No, no, listen. He didn't turn to NBC. An NPC since the beginning. Put out this nonsense this instant. Maria, who only just met us, perhaps, but. Michelle, not you two. So, okay, Nelly. I want you to control me. I want you to be my player. Oh uh, no! I'm your very own personal NPC. Uh, stop it! No! Why did you reset? Ah. Okay, come on. Try and move me with your will. It's okay. We'll get used to it quickly. This can't be happening. Hey, Nelly, drop it already. The joke's over. <laughs> Nelly. Has an imaginary sock puppet. That's it, right? If we consider that this is a game award, that's what his line right now indicates. This guy here is this girl's NPC. It has nothing inside him. I have no idea how that actually works, but... This night director here moves and talks. However, Nelly here wills it. Everything up until now was a performance by her. He was a doll that was being controlled completely by her. That's... You don't have to say that right now. You could all assume as much from what Mel was saying. You didn't have to go out and lay it all out. Why? What do you mean, why? Because it's hard for her. That's irrelevant. In fact, when your fake persona gets revealed, it's an incredibly painful thing. You get ridiculed, ostracized, somehow time spammed completely. At least, I'm not berating her about it. You? You don't know what kind of circumstance she was in. Uh, it's okay. It's as she says. It's true, all of it. It was a persona I created. Uh, I don't have a big brother. I'm an only child. Uh, I got bullied at school and started shutting myself in. I eventually started thinking. I wish I had an older brother. Some 
someone who would always be nice to me. It would never yell at me. A big brother, like a prince, who would always want to be by my side. But it never seemed real just uh, having him in my head. That's why I use the internet. <laughs> So, the Mel on Royale Heaven was... It was actually me. And it wasn't only on Royale Heaven. I made an imaginary brother on lots of sites. <laughs> Writing on different forums and chatting with people. Uh, when it was in words, I don't know, it really felt like Mel was there with me. And looking at the chat logs, I really thought that Mel existed. And it made me feel like he was there on the other end of the computer. It made me really happy. But in reality, not only do I not have friends, I don't have a big brother, either. I'm all alone. For so long. Nelly? Nelly? Can anyone hear me? Um, are we still here? Can't hear anyone right now. Hold up. What the hell. Funny, I could hear all of you guys. Okay, there you I go. Said I can hear again. I said it. Proceed. Okay. Oh, before you continue, uh, Gabby wants to go use the bathroom. Okay. For your reference. <laughs> Winter, she's back then. Okay. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Grab water real quick. <laughs> I meant to ask, are there any issues on my side when it comes to the audio? No, you're fine. Okay. Discord. Check, 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 chest, test, 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 test. Test, test, one, two, three. You're fine. I can hear. <laughs> it's uh, so many trial and errors. Like. Oh. <laughs> Test, 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 test. <laughs> the first one, <laughs> the second one, when, I, when you guys couldn't hear me, I go mute and mute, mute and mute, mute and mute. I did it to go. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Uh, thank you guys, my god. Yeah. Oh, you guys can do is hear the three lines, see pictures, and then suddenly there's no Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> god. It, it must be Discord, it has to be Discord. I'm back. <laughs> Welcome back, let's proceed. Oh, 
for so long, I was keeping up to ass. And when I woke up in the world, I saw how once. And he gave me the same explanation he did just now. I had no idea how he had my mind when I thought I wanted him to do this for that. I'll say this. He did it all seamlessly. It surprised me first. But then I thought it was a dream. I never wanted to take up. Because... The brother I always imagined I had was right here with me! I... I still don't believe it. Hey, Mel. Is it really true? Mel! The big brother won't speak as uh, he is. The tutorial is already over. If I don't give him commands, he won't do anything. I see. Some of the pieces of the puzzle are starting to come together. When I first met you, the reason you were already fully convinced this was a game where was... Nelly? Oh, test, 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 check, check, check. Right before you, I had a road encountered something unreal! If this was the real world, there was no way it could be possible! That's why he would drift off in intense moments. Mm, I couldn't always focus on him. But I was uh, in no state to give no commands. The cat's out of the bag. You need to see it now, right? Mel's reactions were always pretty similar to mine, right? And plus, he never said anything that was upsetting or conflicting with me. I mean, uh, I was controlling him just the way I wanted to. Maybe that's the reason he always had a uh, aggro. Something to do with the way the system sees him. It would be a bad thing if one of us died. Because we're all real humans, you know? But no, never was. <laughs> Prioritizing the, the living, it, it might have been looking out for us from the start. I really can't tell. This game is designed to be nice or cruel. You can be mad at me. I was deceiving you. In real life too. I was always calling and being combative in the forum. Do you think I could be mad after hearing confession like that? Yeah. Uh, if this was the usual JB, you would be immediately call me out and ridicule me. Well, I didn't know your circumstances in real life, so. Don't know someone in real life. Maybe you should. Anyway. Huh. Nelly, do you remember what you said last night? Uh. If Ben was truly a person who didn't exist, wow, I don't want to believe it. I understand. But still, I know that you have friends. How should I put it? One of them might be kind of lame, another is annoying to the point where he gets angry at the drop of a hat. But even those should count for something, right? 
you don't have your imaginary big brother. You're not alone. Mm. Well, um, I fully understand now that you are a complete handful of fringe. But, despite that, I suppose it's possible to stay acquainted. You really are like a game character. Silence, fool. Really? I mean, I'm kind of an emotional wreck. And the, the terrible things I said to you two, um, that was all the real me. Thinking back Thinking to it now, to but... Oh, sorry. It wasn't really anything for me to be concerned about. Thanks to that, things actually stayed interesting. Huh. Well, I won't bother questioning any of it now. Well, it wasn't oh. though you were doing something bad. Actually, you know, I'm more impressed than anything. You were pulling it off flawlessly. Controlling another character while moving and speaking yourself? Most people couldn't do something like that. I've been putting on a half a special long time. I'm used to it, for better or worse. I've had Mal in my head for a long time. I have to put an end to it. Let's have an offline eat up. We have to meet in real life. Yeah. Sure. I'll give it some thought. I wanted to see you here with me! And I wanted to talk with you! I wanted to hear you say my name with your kind, gentle voice! I wanted this happiness to go on! But... I'm okay now! Dumping the touchy mood we had going in here, but how are you getting back? Oh. Ah. Ah. That, 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 that's right. What the hell's going on here? We beat the demon lord, did, did we not? Yeah. Why are we still inside the game? Uh, no. Does it never end? If the player turns off the system, the game ends. But the game war inside continues for eternity. You can try again as many times as you want. Like, New Game Plus? What? So this is where we live now? We can never go back to reality? You mean we have to wander around here forever? No. I, I have to return. It can't end like this. Sometimes in love. Huh? We're not finished, I bet. 
first playthrough is over, but something else got unlocked. Some games are like that. The true boss will appear. Or a secret event happens. Oh, it's fucking Nero Automata. Dark Knight. Did you plan for something to happen the second time around? No, I didn't think that far ahead. Just assume then. When you finish making the game, would you have made a second playthrough element? I may have, inspired by Yoko Taru. <laughs> no, I definitely would have. I knew it. Your games never play by the typical rules. Okay, okay, so if we find whatever game elements that go unlocked, then this time it will end for real! But what are we looking for? As it is now, nothing seems to have changed. Let's go to town and gather info. Then this might say something different. Hey, we're already this far, so why don't we just ask the maker directly? Huh? That's where Andy Gang shine. We're closer to the maker. They actually respond to you and stuff. Yeah, but I don't know anything. Not you. The one who wrote the game after the original scenario. Hey, are you listening, other creator? We just cleared the seventh layer. If there's a secret here, I think it's about time to spill the beans. What? Oh, what's happening? It's 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 crashing. <laughs> They're showing themselves. <gasps> My eyes are all flashy. This view is making me dizzy. Great, now I have no idea where to go. No, I feel like I know where to go. Right now, I feel like I know. It feels like someone's calling to me. And something about it feels familiar. I can feel it. I'm not decided it's static. Let's go. What was waiting for us after we dove through the pool of static was an old living room from some mansion. There was a large fireplace before us, complete with logs crackling in the flames. Just a single rocking chair like anyone would have before a fireplace. But there was a dark tinge to the air around us. Old fireplace. A rocking chair. I've seen this scene before. This is Fairy House. Fairy House was the first game released to the world. Once the players sat in a rocking chair, the fairies would appear before them. Continue to teach the fairy words. We increased that conversational capacity bit by bit. It's a simple game with a simple system. But still, be my first game meant something special to me. So it's the first one to update as well. Oh, why is the secret here a fairy house? Is it related to the seventh layer somehow? Don't ask me. Looking around here, there was no one other than us. But nothing seemed blatantly out of the ordinary. The room was dark, the fire, our only source of light. There's a lonely air of solitude about the room. Well, this is a letdown. We made it to the end game. 
There's not even a little bo last boss or anything similar. It's not scary at all. I don't know. It feels familiar, yet sad. Uh, that's how it made me feel, too. I'm right. Um, it's hard to see in this uh, dim light, and it feels so somber. But it makes me think of a fairy house. I like that game the best. Seems to be any kind of less ball stronger than the demon lord here. Hang on a second. There's no exit here. What? Oh, you're right. There is no door or anything. What? Are we shut in now? Is some sort of escape scene about to start? Maybe it's just part of the game. Like, I don't know, they're recreating fairy house close to the real thing. Or something like that. The real thing. It makes you feel that way, but something's lacking. In the fairy house, once you start the game, you saw the fireplace, but... There were no other elements to it. Ah. Uh. Right, now that you mention it, usually there's a title screen or some options menu. There's literally nothing else here. And that's not even a tutorial. Sheesh, this is exactly what we mean. There's no consideration for the players, no polish. You just can't do a game right. No, it's not that it's unpolished. It's just just the way it is. What I wanted to do with Fairy House was to make it like a game, but actually the opposite. I wanted to do away with what a game is entirely. So even if people were dissatisfied with it, I had no intention of improving it. Changing any of the settings would have been an improvement. To me, it would have been made it worse. But isn't making it easier better? You could have uh, had a lot of people playing that way. For a creator, there are certain things you can give up, other things you can't. No matter how confusing it is, or how little there's no to, to grasp at all, I put in one such exposition, expository line to a fairy house, then the fairies would truly cease to exist. By having the players spend time to search within themselves for how to connect with the fairies, their existence would become something real for the player. In a way, I made it difficult on purpose. You're living in the wrong wage, bunch of filthy casuals. No one wants an exercising vanity in their games these days. A game that has contains none of the creator's ego is just a useless commodity. Something like that can never become a masterpiece. But it doesn't matter if it doesn't sell. Something being unrecognized means it might as well not exist. There are plenty of approachable approaches that could have you success. Success. What you need to think about is how to get your content out into the world. Hello, I'm EA. <laughs> what do you think of first is? You, what you want to express. Even if millions of people download your game, you release no impression on them. But they forgot about it after a number of months, and it fades away like a news headline. Then can you really say it exists? Are you trying to put me down right now? Yeah. I downloaded your game four years ago. I think it was well researched. I definitely consider users in the design. But that was all I got from it. All the other ones were that way too. It sounded well in the moment, but it never remained a topic for long. You only made something to sell and didn't have any sort of expression to go with it. Act like you're nobody. 
Can you say your dumb games live in a last impression? You don't even have that many. Claudia over quantity. They do indeed. Nelly, Aiden's friends as well. It's already a four-year-old game. And... Giselle too. You're talking so idealistically, it almost made me want to fuck. You produce no results. And you have no right to denounce my games. You're just barking at the moon. And now you're taking jabs at me out of regret over your own games. Bashing on someone who actually made money and trying to put yourself on a pedestal. I'm... Try and talk once you're actually in the same league as me. Hey, 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 come down, you two! Why do you have to stop fighting all of a sudden? Agreed. Can you two have your little rivalry debate later? This is not the time for it right now. Yeah, sorry. Alright. I just get a little fired up when people take shots at me. Maybe it's my creator genes? Genes. I'm getting exhausted already. You can't leave this room as we are. So, everyone, search around and find a way to do so. I will be observing from here. Report back when you find something. Not planning on helping again? Huh. This is something that underlings should do. I shall take a few moments rest. Jacob then sat down in a rocking chair near the fire. The chair creaked from the weight of him sitting down. Before that, sound stopped. A voice echoed in the room. Fairy... Uh, Kelly? Oh, what's with these baby noises? Yeah, was that a baby? <laughs> <laughs> creepy. Okay. Hello, JB. Huh? What? Let's have a nice chat together. Uh, what's going? This is how Fairy House started. When the players sat down in a rocking chair, the fairy appeared before them, which meant that Jackal was sitting down, started off Fairy House. Oh, uh, what? So is this uh, the actual voice of fairies? <gasps> Where is it coming from, though? It was such an odd voice. It was indistinct, yet flowed sharply into your head. Why it sounded like a young girl's voice, it was also like that of an elderly woman. Something about it was enchanting. If something such as magic actually existed. It was a magical spells or something in the game. Or rather, the mesmerizing effect of the voice itself. Just hearing the voice threaten to put you in a trance, enchanting you to madness. By putting you in a trance? <laughs> Let's talk together, JB. I was looking forward to talking to you. Talk. I'll do no such thing. You're the perpetrator of all this, yes? Reveal yourself to us this instant! Did something happen today? Hey, don't play games with me! The start was exactly the same as the fairy house I made. At first, the fairy could have made a, made a, could have a coherent conversation. As you taught them more words, certain parameters were unlocked. It could greet you like this. And eventually, it would ask you questions. I remember programming that exact question we just heard. Well, yes. It's been a string of disasters. I've been forced into some crazy game, and to make it worse, we still can't find an exit. Hurry up! 
and return us to our world at once. What does disaster mean? What does it mean? Are you toying with me? This is your doing, right? Why are you putting us through all this nonsense? Answer me! There are too many words for me to answer, JV. You little... Calm down, please. It's a pre-programmed answer. She's... The fairy is only doing as the system this takes. Doing as the system this takes. What? If that's the case, then why are we in the fairy house in the first place? This is deliberately made secret area. Or are we being merely being made to do something pointless again? Put an end to this nonsense! I'm sick of it! You seem to be tired. What? Something sad happened to you, I see. Hey! No more games! What are you talking about? Please tell me about the sad thing that happened today. I will listen. What? Or... It is okay. There is nothing to worry about. I am here to support you. It is okay. What the... It's as though... The voice is trying to soothe them. As you continue talking to the fairy, it starts to adjust the words you use and the nature of your conversations. And the fairy's phrases and demeanor also start to change. When Giselle used the metaphoric console to describe the fairies, she wasn't wrong. For example, said, painful, struggle, hate, sick of it, angry, pointless, repeating these kind of negative words again and again. The fairy would start using phrases to start not accepting your problems. It is okay, JB. Stop! Don't say that right now. What's wrong, JB? Why are you shaking? You are doing a good enough job. You are not a bad person in any way. I'm, I'm telling you to stop. Jackalow. The others were confused by what they were witnessing. Of being a creator of this, I knew all too well. I knew why. Why the fairies seemed to be consoling him. Who was it that hurt you? It is okay. Let us not think too deeply about it and have a good rest. I am your friend. Please do not worry. It is okay. For certain types of people, having overly enthusiastic support only made things harder and added to their stress. What they needed was only someone to be accepting of them. But the fact that the fairy was using such overly comforting language to him must have meant... It meant that Jackable... Jackable, have you ever... told the fairy that you wanted to die? Ooh. So now the fairy, fairy tells me when she hates the suicide, how blind. 